So, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell is all this here? And I'm going to explain in a minute. Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you a little project a friend of mine made, which is simply called a Vanberry. And even though you're seeing two things here, it's actually just one thing, which is made for the Raspberry Pi. And I just happened to have bought a new Raspberry Pi Zero, which came out recently actually, because this is the new version with the camera connector. And I'm not going to uh, go into detail uh, over the Raspberry today, because the main focus is on this little thing here. And it's a Sony Ericsson FM transmitter. And basically what I'm able to do now is I can connect my phone uh, to this headphone jack here, which is a little bit blur because I've deactivated uh, autofocus on my camera because it's annoying like hell. Uh, anyway, so you can connect your phone here and you can actually transmit audio from your phone as example or any other thing like MP3 player or anything else, you can just imagine that it, it doesn't need to be a smartphone or something. Uh, you can transmit your audio from this device to an FM radio, like I've, sh I've shown it. Oh my god, that was loud, holy shit. Sorry for the ear rape, I'm probably going to edit that out, this out. <laughs> so, this is a little FM radio here and I can basically transmit audio from this little thing here to this radio. Uh, the main focus I was actually putting on uh, is that I can transmit uh, audio from my smartphone to an old uh, car radio so you're able to play your custom music without burning any CDs or ca even cassettes like on old cars which don't have a CD player or even an AUX input so yeah this, this is a little neat device you can you can build yourself actually, and it's it's really cheap. Like, I bought the Raspberry. Okay, let me let me activate autofocus. So I'm sorry if the if the image is like wobbling back and forth like it did now. So, anyways, uh, you can buy a Raspberry Zero for like five bucks on uh, Pi Moroni, I think it was called where I bought it, and so it is, it's perfect because it's it's small and. It's, it's it's just a neat little device you can use for this project. You don't have to, of course, you can also use uh, normal raspberries. I don't have one in my reach here right now, but um, I have two other ones. And originally I already tried this like almost a year ago or a few months at least. I'm, I'm not sure when when I tried it the last time. Anyways, I tried it on my Raspberry 1 and it did work perfectly there. So... There's no need for a Raspberry Zero, of course. And basically what you do is you can connect it to the GPIO pins here and control the little radio text you can see on the displays uh, on cars as, as example. And you can, you can control it and the title information even. And, but the main focus is of course the audio. Because <laughs> why would you do it if, if it's not for the audio, <laughs> of course. Anyway, so all you have to do is buy this little thing. I'm going to link everything down in the description or like like uh, this because I'm going to flip the video up uh, after that. So, oh god, the autofocus is stupid. Let me just adjust that. Okay, here we go. I'm using a new camera, so... And let me zoom out a little bit here, maybe. There we go. No, I've focused on the cables. Shit. Oh. Sometimes I hate this camera. Okay, there we go. So, okay. So yeah, you can buy this thing on Amazon for, as example, for like two bucks or something, or even less if you buy it from eBay, you know, uh, or a few of them. So, and as I said, the Raspberry is like five bucks and yeah. Really cheap things, and the little SD card here wasn't even 11 bucks, so yeah, and it's a 32 gigabyte Samsung. Anyway, so what can you do with it? Uh, you can connect your phone, like as shown in the intro here, and let me just clean it a little bit, it's, it looks filthy like hell. <laughs> anyway, so, oh my god, you can connect your phone here, and 
can't play audio through your FM device like this little radio here. And I'm going to power it up because else you won't hear anything. Or let me just turn it on here. Radio. I should zoom out a little bit more here. Yeah, like this. So you have your radio here. And no focus because I turned it off. Oh my god, this video is, is going great already. <laughs> anyway, so let's turn the volume up a little bit. And you're not going to hear much right now because it's not power on. So let me get some power here. And I've just, I'm just using a little power bank here because it works actually better than if you're using a normal power supply because on the power supply you get a little uh, hum in the background. So, let's just power up the raspberry here and wait a little bit because now it's going to turn on and I've set it to, uh, you can set frequency and radio text and everything and as you hear the uh, static noise is gone and I can now play any music with a power amp I'm using here. And of course I have to turn up the volume a little bit so you can hear something. And it's working perfectly fine. We are this device, of course, and if I disconnect to the audio source, of course it stops. So it just just as you see, it goes this route here. And I can play, of course, again. That's a little bit annoying that my phone goes, uh, the volume goes down when I connect something. And you can even run the radio quite a long time from just a little, tiny little parse, uh, process like this because if you connect it, I mean you, you will hear a static noise so uh, turn on your headphones or something now just so I can show you how much it actually takes so I'll have to flip it around actually just in a second and now there it goes so uh, the power supply puts out 5.3 volts which is a little bit too much, but I don't care, honestly. And it draws around, when it's, when it's in standby, when the Raspberry finally stops loading stuff from... Yeah, if you touch it, it's a little bit flimsy here. Um, when it finally stops loading stuff from the microSD, it settles at around 130 to 140 milliamps. Which is impressive, to be honest, because uh, you're powering a little computer like this. And the FM transmitter, and the FM transmitter needs like uh, 40 milliamps or something, not even, 30 milliamps, 30 to 40 milliamps, so just keep that in mind, because you can't overload, you can't easily overload the output from the Raspberry here, with, with, with like the maximum is 55 milliamps or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically it, and if you want to build something like this yourself, uh, let me just turn it off again here. Um, I'll put a link down. Oh, it's like this way because I'm going to flip the video uh, post editing. Okay, I'm a little bit sorry for this sudden jump here in the video because I didn't remember that my camera stops recording after 10 minutes. And yeah, I've just talked like a minute and it didn't record. <laughs> Anyway, so what I was saying, um, if you want to build this whole stuff here yourself, uh, or like just adapter here with the cables, I'll put the link in the, in the description to the FMBerry GitHub page. And everything's explained there, and you can't do much wrong, because if, if you do something wrong and you blow the Raspberry or something, um, you, you can just buy a new one for five bucks and everything's good again. Or if you blow this thing here, because it's it's not it's not easy to blow it actually, because I've, I've tried around and I never managed to break it. So yeah, but if you break it, it's like two bucks, and you're not going to lose a lot of money here on on this project. And overall, it's like a fifty dollar project because the cables cost like if I've bought them for two bucks on Amazon or something, and the audio cable I'm using. I, I don't know where I put it now. Okay, no, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the audio cable I'm using to extend this connector here, which I also bought from eBay 
for a few bucks, like a few cents. So that, that's not, it's that's a really cheap project. And the battery pack here is like, pff, not the uh, 20 bucks or something, because that's that's not actually only a power uh, a battery pack. So it's it's a hotspot, but, or a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi device and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's it's just, it's a little neat little thing here, and if you want to build it yourself, as I said I'm going to uh, link the GitHub page in the description uh, this way actually because it's the one way around. And for the final part of the video, I'm going to show you what you can actually set here on the Raspberry uh, We are SSH and what you can do with the transmitter itself. Okay, after a bit of searching around, I finally found a device which will both display the radio ID here. And the title text, which is scrolling around here, and you can also see which megahertz I'm using, and it just happened to uh, be 100.8 megahertz because it's not that commonly used where I live. So yeah, <laughs> I've just settled with that. And I'm going to show you a few comments here, and I'm going to switch back and forth between the screen recording and the actual video I'm recording here from the camera. So I'm just going to use putty here and we're going to connect to my raspberry we're ssh and let me just log in here so now that we're in we can just type in ctlfmberry and when we hit enter we can see a bunch of things here which you can set and first of all the frequency which i already have set here with 108 and Power on, of course, so you can power it on and off. The next thing is set RDSID, which is the short version here, uh, which I've simply set to my username, which will come here in a second. Here it is. That's the short ID. And you can only put eight characters in here. The next thing you can do is set RDS text which is the long text I have here with open source radio with fmberry and my username and we can take we can change that on the fly of course with ctl fmberry set rds text and I'll just simply put this is a test text for this recording and once I hit enter and wait a few seconds you can see it just reloaded the text And of course you can put a few characters in here too, like I think an exclamation mark, an at symbol, and a few others, and I'm not going to try of course, you know. So <laughs> it's just, just exper experiment with it a little bit and you'll find out sooner or later. <laughs> anyway, so the next thing we can do is set the power in with which the, the module here will transmit and we can, s the default is 3 and it's 2 milliwatt, which is actually enough to cover a range of around 100 meters. So I've tried it in my home and um, it's, it's like an old house and it has thick walls and it's still working fine across the whole house. So it's, it's really amazing. So the next thing we have here is stereo on and off and it's pretty self-explanatory. So I've don't think I have to explain any any more things here. Mute on and off is also explaining itself already, so I don't have to tell you anything about that. So the next thing is gain low and gain off, and I've set gain low to uh, default, because when I set it to gain off, it's uh, going to take the input from, as an as example here, my PC now, and it's it's just not, it's, it's, it's far too loud sometimes and especially if you're using phones so just set it to gain low and you'll fix most of your problems if you're going to build one yourself. The next thing is set volume and I've set it to 2 I think, I'm not sure, let me just check. Uh, yes I've set it to 2 here because everything else just distorts, distorts the audio and it just doesn't, just doesn't sound good anymore. Of course you can play around with these values and just try around a little bit and find out what's good for you. The next comment is the status comment which just tells you all the settings you've made earlier. 
The last command is the stop command and it will just kill the FM battery service. And if you do that, you have to restart it again. And you can simply start it by using sudo etc init d fm berry and let's just do a restart for now okay so fm berry is restarted and you can use it again if you use the stop comment like i'm going to show this one too here so right now it's stopped and i can start it again with start but you can find all of these comments on the github page which you can find in the description below so don't worry and yeah so yeah, that's about it, and I hope you have a lot of fun building it yourself, and if not, I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you want, or subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I very much appreciate your comments, so just tell me if I can improve something uh, for those videos, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching!